Hi, I am Suresh Narayanan. I love my work and I love life in general. Not the most loved, but the most trusted. Bada hua to kya hua, jaise peer khajur, panchi ko chaya nahi, phal la gai ati dur. Suresh, our opening question for you today. What is a common myth or misconception about careers that the younger generation has today that you would like to clarify? I think lead, great leadership is the ability to ask the right questions, but never to have all the answers. Because if you have all the answers, you're playing God. And I don't think even the wisest human being has got the opportunity to play God. Suresh, what do you rely on more, data or instinct? And how does one develop better instinct as a leader? Look, I, I have three ways in which I, I come to a conclusion or take a decision. Uh, number one is I look at facts. I am, I am a fact-based person. So just telling me that something is happening doesn't, doesn't make me sway. Number two, I travel extensively. You know, I'm in the consumer goods space. To me, the wisdom of the shopkeeper is the best wisdom that you can get, which no market research report can throw at you. And third, is the credibility and the trustworthiness of the person conveying that piece of information to me. Do I trust this guy that he is giving me the best and the most correct piece of information that I need in order to take a decision? What are the two or three biggest problems that you think leaders need to solve for in the coming decade? Number one is a sustainable planet. I think we have to be concerned as leaders and not just leave it to governments and to entities to save this planet. Second, the role of technology. Technology is meant to serve mankind, not the other way around. And leaders have to use technology to serve people and not people to serve technology. And the third is all about talent. The single most important differentiator between average performance and great performance is culture and talent. And if these two are nurtured by a leader, I believe that they are well on the path to a successful, sustainable ecosystem. Suresh, what is a common myth or misconception about careers that the younger generation has today that you would like to clarify? One of the myths that exist is that careers are planned by someone else. Just to take the philosophy that the youngsters use today, which I think is a relevant philosophy, which is life is all about experiences. Taking this experience concept forward, you need to do what interests you the most, what you're good at and what you're passionate about, which means that there is a lot of onus on the person himself to carve their careers. In the context, especially of having leaders who are of a different generation. A Gen Z is very far away from me in terms of generation, which means that the Gen Z has to put together and articulate what he or she wants to do with their lives. And then to see in the context of Nestle, how that can be best met. The second, and it's a myth that I see from my perspective, the fact that you stick around in a company for 10 years or 15 years or 20 years is a sign that you are either a slothful fellow or that you are a bored fellow or that you are a risk averse guy. Uh, I think none of this is true. You can be genuinely happy in an organization and continue as I have in Nestle for 24 years. Suresh, what is Gen Z or millennials expecting from their leaders today? I want to bust this myth that Gen Z is some kind of different animal on this planet that we have an incapacity to understand. Leadership expectations of generations remain the same. It's not dramatically different, the context changes. Number one, you want to have an authentic and a trustworthy leader. Second, you want to have a capable leader who's got the necessary guts to be able to take issues head on and handle and manage the organization during a crisis. Third, you want a leader who's creating opportunities for growth, both for the individual and for the organization. And four, you want a leader who is sensitive, compassionate, caring about the planet and caring about his people. When I started 40 years ago, it was exactly the same. There was nothing different in, in the way it was. And the people who became my icons were all those people who exhibited these traits. So let's double click on that. Are you saying there isn't a different way to manage millennials today versus let's say how your boss had to manage you? When I started my career, we had a lot of what were called type A managers. Uh, it was a command and control system that they decided that what was right and you had to do. Today, I think it is more consultative and it is more collaborative. The leadership model itself has changed. If I think that I can lead a successful company by 
dotting all the i's and crossing all the t's i'm hugely mistaken and i think that style of management has gone out a long time back today's expectations is that there is a leadership that empowers that respects that is disciplined it strokes you on the back if you do something good i think all of us as human beings we crave recognition we don't necessarily crave a huge amount of money in our in our bank how much value do you place on pedigrees as a leader and what's your message to young leaders who don't have a pedigree honestly for me more than pedigree what is important is attitude and aptitude i mean i get inspired by the isro model chandrayaan 3 was put together by a bunch of people who are not harvard stanford mit iit or whatever but they were from ordinary engineering and and technology institutions you can have the best pedigree but yet you can add nothing in terms of real value i spent a fair amount of time traveling and i like to go to institutions which are not the a a plus institutions i go to the b and c institutions why do i go there because they need the stroke of a leader to get the best out in them so i reach out to these these youngsters and i must say i barely can sense the difference between one pedigree and the next the ones who are in fact from an institution which is less well known are more committed are more grateful and are also much more passionate to do the things that they should be doing suresh how do you spot leadership early on in somebody in their 20s number one is their attitude how confident how cogent how passionate are they about what they're doing you can easily sense it the second one is definitely aptitude and the ability to take on difficult assignments those youngsters who put up their hands to difficult assignments i give them 10 on 10 it's easy to do the easy stuff it takes courage to do the tough ones and the third one is the capability to marry kpis and objectives with people and the needs of people if they show me that early sign of leadership that is beyond the self into others in the organization that's a good symbol for me specialists or generalists what's the better way to build one's career the world has become a lot more uncertain different capabilities are involved at different stages the more you go around assignments the greater amount of experience and wisdom you gather i spent 5 years in the arab spring had egypt libya and sudan those 5 years helped me manage the crisis that we had in maggi 8 years ago if i had been a traditionally brought up leader without this exposure i might have reacted to the whole crisis in terms of the unidimensional focus that i had either a marketer or a channel or some specialist like that the world today is becoming a lot more complex organizations need to be a lot more flexible to be able to give opportunities to young people to experiment ultimately gravitate towards something in their career which gives them lasting value both to themselves and to the organization what do you think is the leader's most important job in a crisis number 1 the ability to manage yourself and your emotions i think that is more than 50% of the of the problem number 2 is to be cognizant of the fact that people hurt and that compassion is an important element of leadership and number 3 always think how will i come out of this mess when it finally ends and what do i want the organization to be one of your guiding principles you've mentioned is take care of your people and things will take care of themselves how do you put this into practice and what are results you've seen there are three things that that uh, i have always practiced number 1 is i give leadership roles to people who are not fully prepared but who can get there number 2 i coach and guide and i get out of the way and number 3 i stand behind them through thick and thin it's very easy to break records with people in good times it's very difficult to break bread with people in bad times and the fourth principle is the principle of empowerment when i make a leader i empower I say go ahead I stand behind you you will succeed you will fail if you fail there is no problem because failing to succeed will help you to succeed to succeed you've said that speed without direction is as worthless as an arrow without a target what are suresh's methods to find direction task of leadership uh, to me is three important elements number one is i think leaders spend too much of time looking through the rearview mirror 
to see what the hell has happened, what the hell has happened and not looking ahead on what can happen and what could happen. Number two is to feel the pulse of the organization. Preparedness for change is as important as making the change happen. And number three, never lose your winning spirit. A leader cannot either rest on his oars or when failure comes to say, now give up, back up time. You have to have your winning spirit and yet you need to know when to step off. Other than your business performance, what is the one thing you're most proud of as the leader of Nestle? You know, Ruben, it is now legacy time for me. I am no longer the leader who is seeking to impress people or to prove something. Whatever I've done, I've done in these 40 years. Whatever I could prove, I have proven. What I am most delighted about is the cadre of leaders that this organization has nurtured and continues to nurture. Ultimately, it is going to be this leadership that is going to propel this organization forward. Suresh, what is it about you and your leadership that keeps making Nestle turn to you in times of crisis? I try and be as authentic as, as I can, what's and all. So my people know what my strengths are, they know what my weaknesses are, and they know how to, how to play uh, that uh, to the fullest extent. Number two, they know that I care for people. To me, that is the most important task of leadership, and that I'm sworn to. I have never compromised treating people with decency, respect, and with dignity over performance, over numbers, over any of these things. And the third thing is, people realize that uh, I don't have too much of an opinion about myself. I'm not caught up in this ego trip of always trying to show that I am the most clever guy in the room. Suresh, how do you square this up as a leader of taking tough calls on people, yet keeping morale high? Number one is the buck stops at my table. I never believe in upward delegation of problems or downward delegation of troubles. The buck stops at my, at, my, at my desk, which means that I have to see reality in the eye. If I don't see it, nobody else will see it for me. Number two, when tough decisions on people have to be taken, they have to be taken. So I am unemotional about the decision to be taken. I'm emotional about the execution. So to me, the execution is extremely important. If I have to take a tough call and somebody tells me, this is how I want you to treat, then I'll say, then I'm not the guy to do it for you. You find somebody else. And I have the honesty and the courage to say that when it happens. And what is the kind of culture you would like to be known for? I would like to be known as a, a decent, professional, uh, trustworthy human being. Not the most loved, but the most trusted. Because I would have taken decisions that hasn't entirely endeared me to a lot of people. But at least they trust me for what I've done. The other bit that uh, defines the way in which I, that I would like to infuse in the company is a greater sense of urgency and speed. Two elements have come out within the organization. One is the element of speed, and the second is security, and security of the self. So sometimes people are still scared of voicing their opinions because they feel that somebody will get offended by it. Two values of the Nestle culture that you are really proud of and two things that you would like to infuse more of in the Nestle culture. I'm very proud about the culture of respect in this organization. Respect for, this, for ourselves, respect for each other, respect for diversity, respect for the future. I think that's for me, respect is an intrinsic part of it. And the second one is the fetish for quality. We can kill ourselves in order to ensure that quality is of the right standard. And that's why the consumer trusts the name Nestle. Suresh, are there any failures that have taught you something more about people? I was responsible many years ago uh, for the launch of a brand, a fruit drink called Treetop when I was in Lipton. It sank without trace. What I learned was not to just lick my wounds, but I had a lesson in leadership. Because the one who led the project at that point in time in the company chose to step down from his position. And he said, none of these youngsters are involved or should be held responsible for it. I should be as a leader. That set the tone for me, that leadership walks the talk. Suresh, what's the most defining feedback that you received on your leadership? Who did it come from and what did they tell you? I received this feedback uh, uh, almost at the start of my career. And it came from my, my, land man, my line manager at that point in time. And we were going through a huge crisis in Gujarat at that point in time. I am trusting by nature. My distributors were unable to pay the money to me and we ran up huge outstandings. My line manager called me up one day. He said, Suresh, you are a very trusting young man, but money 
does not run on emotions. You better start getting tough on such things. And I think that was a revealing start because I, I said, look, it's a difficult time. You know, he'll pay me back when he's able to. That was the kind of balance between yin and yang for me, between the KPI-driven side of my job and the uh, people side or the human side of my job. Three things that Suresh is known for while running an effective meeting. Focus, laughter, speed. How does a leader like you go about giving CXOs feedback? Their treatment of people, their strengths, and their opportunities. How do you create disagreement in a company and how do you create a culture of disagreeing with the leader? What I really try and do is uh, make the discussions very free-flowing and transparent. Uh, so there are no holes barred except respect. That is inviolable. So you cannot be disrespectful or personal on each other at meetings, but you can say exactly what you feel like and what you want to. Who are some inspiring bosses or leaders that you have worked for? And what did each of them teach you? When I started my career at, uh, at, uh, at Hindustan uh, Lever, as it was then called, uh, Hindustan Unilever, I think I was uh, greatly inspired by, uh, by our then chairman of the company, Dr. Ganguly. And that was because of the kind of leader that he was. You know, he was caring, he was tough, he could be brutally honest, uh, but he was obsessively sincere in what he uh, spoke and what he did. And that really, that, that inspired me. Cut to, 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 to Nestle, I had a boss uh, when I was posted in Egypt, a gentleman called Roger Stetler, who was the, the, uh, the head of Africa in those days. And I was going through hell in Egypt. And here was a leader who stood by me seven days a week, 365 days a year. And he said, you don't worry about what happens in this house. You just take care of your people and your business. And we are here to support you. It seldom happens, you know, when there's a crisis, everybody and his brother wants to jump in and give you advice and do this, do this. This man just kept himself off. He said, you're clever enough, I trust you enough, you're authentic enough, and you'll do this job well. It's a rarity in today's day and age. And I think that was something that, these are, these are two people, I must say, really inspired. Who in Business India is inspiring you right now and why? There is one business leader that I have greatly looked up to in the context of India and he's unfortunately no longer around is J.R.D. Tata. The sheer vision, the sheer power of creating the Tata enterprise and the focus on ethics, equity and decency at the center of how that enterprise is run. What does someone after four decades of experience like you seek feedback on? Look, I, I seek feedback on two things. Uh, number one is my comprehension on issues. You know, the technology that is being used today is very different from what I'm used to. And secondly, uh, a feedback on impact. Uh, when, I, when I talk something or, or say something, am I simple enough, am I clear enough, am I cogent enough, am I sincere enough? My immediate direct reports will obviously give me one set of feedback. But when I go, do when I go down the line and talk to the youngsters, they might give me a completely different feedback. What inspires Suresh Narayan to still come to work every day? I love people. Every one hour, I walk out of my office and I walk down the stairs and I walk across the office and I chat with people. I know that I'm sometimes a little bit like a bee in the bonnet. I mean, I can be a little bothersome, right? But this is my way of getting energy. When I see a young person do something, I ask them a few questions. They tell me, sir, we are doing this, we are doing this, we are doing this. It energizes me. It helps me to see the future. And I am at the stage of life when I would like to see the future. And this is what this organization will be and can become. And those few moments are happy moments for those youngsters. They are inspiring moments for me. Suresh, if you could trade places with anyone in any industry right now, who would it be and why? To me, I'm, is, my life is all about, about Nestle and what you know this, this, this logo here means a lot to me. So I don't want any other corporate job, I don't want any other political job, I don't want any other social job. Just leave me alone in Nestle. And once I finish here, I want to teach. That's what I want to do. Hopefully I'll be reasonably successful. At least a few institutions might call me. And if nothing else, I crack a few jokes. But at least it will be better than, uh, than seeking someone else's job. Suresh, your quick fire with Kunba starts now. The hardest thing about being a CEO is Dash. Saying no. One thing you've learned never to do as a leader? To deflate. One thing you've learned always to do as a leader? Inspire. Three simple words that describe Suresh the leader? Simple, honest, straight. One thing you wish people knew a little more about Suresh? How much I love them. A personality trait that gets in your way the most? Emotion. 
When in doubt, Suresh Dash. Trust. If you were in my seat and could put anyone there, who would it be and what would you want to ask them? I'd probably put the United Nations Secretary General and ask him the simple question, why can't you solve the issues of war in this world? What's that one thing in your job you could get better at? Listening. First thing Suresh does in the morning, the last thing he does at night. When I get up in the morning, I look at the sun and when I go to sleep in the night, I must confess, I look at my mobile phone. Coffee person or tea person? 100% coffee and Nescafe at that. Your favorite workday time waster is? I think is going and wasting someone else's time. A secret vice nobody knows about you? I love sweets. Besides his family, Suresh's most prized possession is? My pen. 20 years ago, money for you meant? Everything. Today, money for you means? Little. What's the one thing that's been on your personal to-do list for the longest time? To run the marathon. The soundtrack to your life will be? Don't worry. Be happy. A secret daydream? To be an actor. If you weren't the CEO of Nestle, you would be? Teacher. Center court with Roger Federer or an intimate evening on Kabir with your batchmates? I think at this stage of my life, intimate evening with Kabir with my batchmates. A Doha that you are living by at this stage of your life? बड़ा हुआ तो क्या हुआ जैसे पेड़ खजूर पंछी को छाया नहीं फल ला गए अति दूर योर फेवरेट मैगी फ्लेवर इफ आई सेड बोरिंगली मसाला यू वुड से आई वुड से यस टू इट आई लव मसाला कैन सुरेश एक्चुअली मेक मैगी इन टू मिनट्स आई कैन वन डी टू सी प्लेटफॉर्म दैट्स कॉट योर आई मामा अर्थ योर फेवरेट बिंज वॉच टिल डेट क्राउन Your favorite book on leadership is How will you measure your life? One thing that Rajita your wife and your colleagues would both agree about you. I talk a lot. Twist in history, go back in time, civil services, getting to start a D2C platform or leading Nestle. Lovely twist you gave my original ambition was to be an IAS officer and detracted and went into the corporate world. Uh, I think in hindsight I have no regrets whatsoever about it so I'll probably continue to be in the corporate field what does suresh get nervous around most my wife 70 hour work week dash uh, yes and no if the situation demands yes if i'm achieving that in 4 hours no an actor who would play your biopic kamala hasan what does your family discuss most at the dinner table What I discuss is at dinner what's for lunch and uh, yes uh, when my daughter is also around uh, then it is about life and careers and she says dad how boring but that's the honest truth a decade from today nestle will be the finest most workable and the best company in this country a decade from today suresh will be will be a teacher looking out of his window at the nestle van passing by and saying wow what a company this was that i had the opportunity to work for suresh narayan it's been an absolute privilege having this chat with you thank you very much i think kunba is doing what the management schools have not done which is put together a collection of thoughts by the best leaders in the profession which is honest candid actionable and relevant for the future good ask to you guys and then smile at me so i am at ease <laughs> good afternoon let's baggy okay <laughs>